Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. This is a 2006 Cadillac, I think it's a DTS model. It's got the 4.6 liter V8, that's the Ocho, yep, Cadillac. Uh, customer states a litany of concerns and I brought the wrong key out here. This is not a Cadillac key. Cut. There we go, that's the right set of keys. Anyway, the customer here has a, uh, a list of concerns on this car. I'm gonna get it in the building and uh, begin the inspection process. And uh, we're gonna see what uh, what's going on with this particular unit. Beginning engine starting sequence now. Okay, we're looking at left front low tire pressure, 48,821 miles on the odometer, and a service engine soon warning indicator is illuminated. All right. I guess we'll start with that uh, that warning. Climate powering down. Okay, let's get her into the building here. Got a full house going today. Cody's here finishing the engine on that F-150. Got Jesus over there holding this up with a can of brake clean. He's doing a brake job with his brake clean. Dave's over yonder. He's uh, doing something else on that, uh, I think that's a 07 Honda CRV. They're tag teaming that one. So yeah, we're, uh, we're we're cranking along pretty good here today. I'm excited. Parking the auto. Let me go fetch the scan tool. We're gonna plug in, initiate communication, and then uh, see what is ailing this particular Cadillac. So, stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good diagnostic video. Opening Z hood. All right, scanner's plugged in, going into engine, codes menu, displaying codes, displaying them again. I don't know why it makes you do that twice. Here we go, couple things going on here. Got a P0134HO2 circuit insufficient activity, bank one, sensor one, uh, symptom zero zero, test failed. P0174, fuel system lean on bank two. So we're running lean. P300, engine misfire detected. And a P2A00, closed loop circuit performance bank one, sensor one. All right. So we have some fuel trim and some O2 sensor issues here. Let's go into our data and take a look at live data. Okay, here we go. We've got bank one, heated oxygen sensor. Bank one, sensor one, this is a millivolt reading, 300. Bank one, sensor two, that's the one behind the catalytic converter. Uh, we're gonna pay that little mind right now. Uh, bank two, sensor one, 30 millivolts. We've got one of them one of them at 400, one of them down here at 30. So that, uh, that's not what we should be seeing. Let's go ahead and graph these guys and take a look at them visually. So here's our bank one upstream sensor and our bank two upstream sensor we can see there's a quite a bit of difference between these two lines right here we should see quite a bit of switching i'd like to see this bank one sensor doing the same thing that the bank two sensor is but it is not so that could be there's a misfire going on and we've got fuel running into the exhaust and the sensors are picking up on it uh, that could be a lazy sensor that is faulty uh, we saw that p300 code so let's go take a look at live misfire data real fast switch it back to our PID list. Cylinder 3 has a misfire, looky there. Cylinder 1 has a misfire, cylinder 5, and cylinder 7. Okay, let's give this a little bit of throttle here and watch these misfires, see if they continue. And they're gone. And they're back. There we go. Cylinder 1, cylinder 5 had some. Let's go down and look at the uh, a crude history of misfires. We'll see a trend. Cylinder one, cylinder three, cylinder five, cylinder seven. So we've got one entire bank that is unhappy, to say the least. Um, off the cuff, what I'm going to suspect here is we have a lazy sensor on bank one. Again, it should be switching. We should see this graph switching high, low, high, low, high, low, and it is not. Yep, there's bank one again, bank two, sensor one. We see our millivolts have not changed. We're gonna give it some throttle. Yeah, we're 
we're not switching here. So what's happening here is the ECM doesn't know what to do. Uh, one side is receiving or sending either faulty or incorrect information to the ECM and the other side uh, doesn't know what to do because it has two conflicting pieces of information when it should have pieces of information that are uh, they're synchronized uh, slightly. So here we go, look, look, now it's back. Now the sensor's doing what they should be. We're switching again, we're going high, low, high, low, high, low. That's what we'd like to see. I think we have a lazy O2 sensor uh, on bank one upstream in the exhaust. That's what I think is going on here. Uh, let's go ahead, pop the hood real quick, and uh, let's just take a look at that sensor, make sure that the cable is okay. Perhaps we can even pull it out a little bit and inspect the element if, uh, if there's enough space to do such things. So let me get centered on our rack here. That's good. Ding, you're in drive with the door open. Okay, powering down. Pew! Pew! It smells like burning oil. Taylor Swift is not a PSYOP. Ah, evil North Star engine. No, no, evil. Okay, I want to see what that stinky exhaust leak smell is before we really get into this thing. Got the rack set up. Black subscribe button. Moving on up, Cadillac. Moving on up. All right, let's just go straight to the source of the problem. Uh, like most North Stars, this thing suffers from the self-lubricating chassis modification. Yeah, there's oil everywhere. Okay, so up high, I see a bunch of oil. Looks like it's going to be valve cover gaskets. Yep. Uh, yep. Oh, man. Alternator killing oil leakage. Probably the front seal. I... Oh man, yeah, look at that. The suspension bushing is covered in it. Hmm, oil level sensor's probably leaking. The subframe's leaking. That motor mount's leaking. Yeah, that bushing's okay. Eesh. Let's see if I can see the rear valve cover. I just hit that with this and sent dirt into my face. That was fun. Oh wow, this has already been replaced once too. See the valve cover way up yonder, back in that hole. See the bolt above the exhaust? You can see some blue in there, meaning someone has already attempted to reseal this. Okay, yeah, a whole bunch of it over there on that corner. Mm-hmm, yeah, that's a North Star thing. There's a reason nobody wants to work on these. It was uh, the beginning of the planned obsolescence right here at its finest. Yep, someone's resealed the pan, that's leaking. Okay, well, we need to pull the motor out and reseal it again. That's, uh, that's what we've gotta do here. Oh yeah, yeah, we were down here looking for O2 sensors, weren't we? That's right. Okay, so, our cylinder arrangement uh, places the rear bank of cylinders as uh, one, three, five, and seven. So if we're looking for an O2 sensor, I need to see if we can't find where it is. I don't see it back here. Uh, let's see an EGR port in that manifold. There's our rear O2. That's the one that monitors the converter right here. Let's see, look up front. There's one of the front O2s right there. This is bank two. So bank one is behind the transmission. Yeah, I don't even see where that thing's at. It must be accessible from the top because down here. Oh, I see a wire. Yeah, it's up there. Okay. Let's let this thing down again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop off the... Uh, the engine cover and let's see how much access we have to the vital components of this particular vehicle coming down lock release north star release all the way down again what are you doing with that ford over there buddy about to line up the transmission good thing that's a twelve thousand pound lift capable of nine thousand pounds yeah 
Ooh, I, I, I hate that lift. I, I really do. It scares me. Okay, here's our sensor connector. That's this guy right there, that one. Okay, North Star lid. Let's just pop this thing off of here. Let's see what treasures lie beneath. A uh, giant intake manifold, yay. All right, so there's our little connector here. That, uh, that guy right there. Uh, the customer had requested that we replace the spark plugs in this, probably for the misfires, but I'd like to pay some attention to that O2 sensor before we do anything. Now, if memory serves here, I think the best way to get after that sensor back there is behind this uh, EGR piping. So, yeah, it appears that's not even attached to much. The, the wires on that sensor look like it's been changed once upon a time, but I'm gonna take it out anyway because I don't know what's in there. Is it a cheapo Amazon unit or is it a good unit? Uh, I wanna go ahead and pull it out and take a look at it. My computer's in the way. Your computer's in the way. <laughs> I don't yell, sir. I'm not gonna yell at you. Why would I yell? I don't know. Hose clamp pliers in for the win. Self-lock that guy in position there. And now I can just uh, take my pliers back. Pull this EGR boot off of here. Careful. Those things will snap back. If your finger's nearby, it's going to hurt. Okay. Here is our sensor connector. Pretty tough to see. I need a trim tool to get that connector off. See the little plastic thing coming through to secure it? I'm gonna pry that off with a trim tool. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't trust a new sensor when this condition happens because I have seen over and over and over and over again brand new sensors that are failing to operate because they are of a generic, the generic brand, and we just don't know. So I wanna find out. Okay, so we got that little blue thing on there. Take that off. That's to retain the connector clip. Unconnect. And I I don't think we can see. You can barely feel it down there. Yep, yeah, okay. I'm gonna stick an O2 sensor socket down that hole and try to work that thing out. Okay, incoming wobbly bit. We've got the O2 sensor socket here. It's slotted to allow for uh, the wire to pass over it because there's a wire sticking out of the end. When I dig it out, you will see. Right now we can't see, but I'm working on it. Okay, so that is on the sensor. We try to get down in there with a uh, with an extension. See what I can do about breaking that thing loose. Once I get this thing out, we'll pull the spark plugs out and take a look at those two. A uh, customer asked for some spark plugs. They also brought me engine oil and a filter and a belt. Um, I'm reluctant to put a belt on it because that belt's covered in oil from whatever that oil leak is that's going on over there. And since these valve cover gaskets are new, I don't know if all that oil that I saw is, unclick please. Oh, that's tight. I don't know if all those uh, oil leaks are residual from the last leak event before they put valve cover gaskets on or if uh, these new ones are leaking. It's one of them things that's like, it, what if they are leaking and these folks had just paid to have these leaks repaired and it's a failure. Maybe they don't warranty it or, oh, yeah, that thing's on there, that's tight. I need to change positions here and get some more leverage applied. I've even got the big ratchet on it. Here's what I'll do. Turn that thing this way. Well, something happened. Okay, it's turning now. We're coming out. But yeah, you've got to ask yourself at what point is it worth it or is it not? Okay, I need to uh, pay some mind to the wire on the sensor down there. It's starting to coil up a little bit, so I need to reach back and uncoil it. Oh man, oh man. Tight squeeze. Here's what I'll do. Let's pull the tools out. 
perhaps I can reach back there and uh, unscrew this by hand. It's probably a little warm. No, I can't reach that. No, 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 no. Back in with the tool. I'll just have to do this the, the long and cumbersome, difficult way. Turn it some. And just bring the wire around the extension as it rotates. I was feeling like this sensor is new, but maybe it's not. It's, it's kind of tight on those threads. Uncoil the wire some more. Can you guys see what's happening down there? It's pretty tough. There we go. That might be a little better for you. There we go. Couple uncoils. Here we are. There's our there's that sensor. Hmm. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so here's what we've got. This is the one that came out. Looks like it's a Denso sensor. It's a part number one two five nine or seven nine or nine or zero. Tough for you guys to see, but I can't really tell if this is original or if it's been replaced once upon a time. Really tough call. This is a Bosch sensor. This part number is, can't make it out, 374131. Let's take a look at the element. We've got a difference in the element style. Uh, let's check our fitting or our connector. You wanna make sure, let me get a light. Some of these connectors, although they often look the same, you'll find like the, the tang inside of it. See that little tang right there on the right hand side of these? Sometimes you'll find that tang is in a different location, which prevents the sensor from going in uh, in a different, uh, different plug or a different area. This one matches up. So I think what we should do is toss this guy in right here and restart this thing and check on those fuel trims and see if they come back into line. Okay, going back into our viewing location here. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll get this thing screwed in. I'm gonna try, let's see if I can get you guys down here. If I can, here, move that out of the way. All right, the element is in line with the threads. Twist this guy in my hand here. Ooh, hot, it's getting a little warm. Okay, it's threading up. Yeah. Okay, so what I'll do, I'm gonna run this down as far as I can by hand and then we'll go in with the socket to, to finish it off. Let's give some untwisting action to our cable. Okay, it's about as far as that wants to go. So, I'll go back down with that O2 socket, spin it down the rest of the way, apply some torque, plug it in, then we'll check it, see if she works. So here, we'll grab the, grab the cable, 
slot it into the socket, see that? And then use that cable to guide the socket down. Or not. Oh, it's binding up on the heat shield or the heat shrink or whatever. There we go, unrolled it. Sorry boys, I hit you with an extension. Okay, we're on. So I shouldn't have much to go in the way of turning this. Those threads are bottomed out. Oh yeah, eighth of a turn. Click. That guy's tight. Not tiger tight. We don't need it that tight. We just need it kind of snugged up. This thing. Bring that on the back side of this EGR tube. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and secure the connector, but I'm not going to push the end into the bracket just yet. If this is a no change operation, I'll have to rethink my life and probably pull the sensor back out. Pretty sure we're right on the money with it, but you never know. It could be uh, massively inaccurate with my diagnostic assumption here. Come on, rubber EGR business. Cody, is that your phone that keeps making the speaker beep, or is that my phone that keeps making the speaker beep? Huh. Okay, so, real easy method to release these guys is just get around them with a uh, some big channel locks or pliers. Just push and click, and it resets the clamp. Then I'll go back in with the hose clamp pliers and point that thing in the correct direction. I like to line hose clamps up the same way they came off. I think right about there is accurate. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. I'll take that. Cool. So then I just need to plug in this EGR valve, exhaust gas recirculation. That's good, and that new sensor is installed. Let's run inside, restocking the engine, and we're gonna take a look at those O2 sensor waves and see if we have any change in system performance. Hey, Murphy's Law is real, sir, especially in automotive repair. Okay, so scanner's still powered up. We were talking about Murphy's Law. He, uh, he put that engine in and one of the studs on the exhaust manifold is inside of the pipe, so now the pipe can't come out. So he's gonna ratchet strap the exhaust back to clear the stud, to put the stud up over, or the pipe up over the stud and into its position. Murphy's Law, beginning engine restarting. All right, back into sensor data. Short terms. Pid list. Okay, there we go. We're adding a bunch of fuel now. Short terms, bank one and two. And we're misfiring. Oh, we're misfiring hard now. Oh, I'm dumb. I did that. Look, vacuum leak. I told myself to not forget to remember to do that, and I forgot. I left the vacuum line from the brake booster pull the brake booster off oopsie i'm dude cody my own worst enemy dude i heard that canvas guy didn't it? yeah it's i got a camming north star check engine lights flashing it's like i'm misfiring you're new here let's shut her down restart there we go fuel trims come on wake up Yes, it's running much better now. The flashing check engine light, universally, what that's communicating to you when it flashes is that the conditions are present that will damage the catalytic converters. So if you're driving around with a flashing check engine light, you're damaging your converter. You do that too long, it's gonna overheat the thing, 
and melt it and then you have to fix whatever problem broke the converter and you'll have to replace the converter so you do not want to be driving around with a uh, a flashing check engine light that's the that's the bad one so fuel trim short terms we're adding some fuel here long terms are fairly stable we want to see long terms hanging out uh, plus or minus 10 so these eights and sevens are looking good right now let's go back into our sensor graph and take a look at uh at what those o2s are doing here we go o2 bank one sensor one that's the one we just changed high low high low look at that beautiful waveform we had a lazy sensor yep looking good in the neighborhood hey cody what do you think man come over here it's cp's garage check out his channel in the, this channel's description down below how do you think those guys are looking? Bank one sensor one, bank one touch. They look like they're switching pretty good. Yep. This one was lazy, and then this one didn't know what to do, so it was biasing high. I'd say we're good. What was that? Yeah, that's a good question. What mm -hmm. was that? What was that? Let's go check out misfires. We have that. We're not going to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not going to worry about that. Let's go see if those misfires went away. We had active misfires on one through seven. Uh, Fid list again. Oh yeah, nothing. Cylinder one, three, five, and seven. No misfires in sight. A little throttle blurp. That's a confirmed kill right there. I think we're good to go. Oh, there's one on two. There's a couple on six. There's a couple on six. But our guy also wanted us to put spark plugs in this as well. So, since uh, we don't have that bias misfire on bank one, and I believe, yeah, that's illustrating it right here. Cylinder one, three, five, and seven. Yeah, we're starting to see, well, you know what? Fuel trims are also uh, out of line right now too. Because it hasn't, uh, hasn't restabilized. Them? Yeah, I can reset them, I'll do that later. Let's go ahead and pull out one of the spark plugs first and see what those guys are looking like. Powering down. Maybe they're new, maybe they're not. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the bank two plugs out. Those are the easiest ones to get to. I think I'll just start with this first one here. Disconnect our coil connector very carefully. Pop that guy off. Go in with a Torx 30 to get the coil apart. Fastener. Loud noises. There's our coil. Looks fairly decent. What are these right here? AC Delco. These might be the originals. Probably are. Okay, 5 8 inch spark plug socket. Going down in the hole. Unkick. It's a speed ratchet. I smell that oil burning again. Nasty. And survey says, yeah, those are the originals. Look at all that carbon tracking right here. It's not okay. Anode and the electrode have some wear to them. Yeah, I'm gonna recommend a set of spark plugs for this unit as well. Okay. Okay, so that plug was absolutely garbage. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull the rest of them out. We're gonna try to expedite this and not have an hour and a half long video. Mm. Also, not going to break the connectors. Seriously? I know. I know what to do. I'm gonna pull out the the bolts first, and I could pull the coils up and then remove them. Might be easier. Backside's gonna be fun. Get in there. Get on away, I can't hold 
Sounds good. What is it, sir? You can't say that. Don't do No. <laughs> Cody's frustrated with his engine. I'm frustrated with technicians that don't fix their screw-ups. Oh, you mean from like all those bolts that you found that didn't exist that were broken off that you had to fix? Yeah, all those and the starter wire. Does your guy want to put a new starter in that? Oh, that'll be fun. Hey, look, a uh, little rubber seal right here for the coil. I found you. That is supposed to go on here. There. Okay, let's pull the rest of these, uh, these plugs out of this unit. And then we'll dig the, the rear ones out. Cab off. Oh yeah, I was gonna take the cab off, but it looks like you could almost do it in chassis if you drop the differential out. Also nasty. Yep, we're okay. So we're getting rid of these guys. But just go out back and get the rear ones next. Okay, so we're gonna have to pull this uh EGR. Ooh, sorry guys. This EGR or air pump. I think this is an air pump valve. I was calling it EGR, exhaust gas recirculation. It might be air pump. We have to pull this bracket off of here in order to get to the coils under there. So we're gonna need to disconnect uh, that connector. And then there's some 10 mils, two up front. And I think there's a, oh, that feels like not a 10 millimeter out back. Oh, that's cause there's no fastener in it. Hey Cody, I got people not putting bolts in this car too. Really? Yeah, uh -huh. seems to be the popular option. Well, when you can't get to something, yeah, just don't bother putting it back. Yeah, look at that. Okay, 10 millimeter wobbly bit. Get in there and pull this bracket off. There we go. Oh, I dropped it. Uh -oh. It's fine, I'll get it. Instru Did that wire break? The one that he didn't want to fix? Yeah. Huh. And now you got to fix it anyway. Yeah. Weird. How about a magnet? Yeah. Uh, okay, so now, now we're getting somewhere kind of. Okay, let's go in here with the Torx and start pulling these coil fasteners, bolts, whatever's. We'll get the coils uh, pulled out, removed, disconnected, and then we can dig the spark plugs out. Let's see here. Where oh where is the the thing I'm looking for? Is it over here? I can't find Oh there it is. Can't see it. So I'll pull the coil up some. Unconnect to the connector without breaking it. Good thing it's not a Toyota connector. Thing would have snapped right off. But Toyotas are the best. Sure, on some things. Look at that. Barely wants to come out of there. Got two fine nuts on there. Right there. No. I think I'm supposed to take this whole EGR or air pump thing off. But that hose is flexible. Let's push it back. 
still not enough. But it will be. It will be. <laughs> Are you okay? I can hear you grieving. What I'm not okay with. How did you break that wire? Why'd you touch it if you knew it was going to break? Oh. What if you will solder it and then it doesn't start? Oh, but he already told you you didn't want to get a starter. You mechanics are all the same. I'm trying to upsell. Well, I don't like putting together. Isn't it? <laughs> Self-censored. I mean, my goal here is to get this thing taken apart before the plugs arrive. I, I've already ordered them. Push this guy over. <laughs> Sneak it right out. There we go. Uh-oh. I dropped the little, uh, little rubber dealio. There's one. Another one. I think it fell down. I'll touch that in a minute. Okay, so I've uh, disconnected that fitting that we just reconnected when you guys weren't looking. I need to move this uh, EGR unit over and that'll give me access to this uh, ignition coil here and then that one down over there. Move it along. Okay, a couple more coils here. It's tight. That's the snap of never having been removed before. Yeah, uh, these have never been off. <laughs> he can see clearly now the front end is going back on. I can see all the obstacles in my way. Don't quit your day job. Mm, come out of there. There we go. Okay, this is the hardest oil, I think. And the rubber thing is still hanging out down here. I reach in and grab that rubber business. There it is. Good. Cool. Okay. Now I just got to dig the, the plugs out, throw the new ones in. We should be good to go on this segment. Spark plug socket, wobbly bit, three quarter inch extension. It's not enough extension. Redo. Try it with the three inch, a little bit longer. Sure. Just as I suspected. Okay, scoot this guy over. Get that out of the way. Flex it right on over there. And then get in. Similar condition to the others. Last one.
Beautiful. Cool beans. Let's get these things out of the way here. Let's go ahead and unbox the new ones. I chose to uh, get some NGKs for price point. These things were like $19 a piece from the store, so we weren't gonna go with those. We'll go with the NGKs. They'll be just fine in this car. The G powers. Yep, looking good. They're tapered, the depth is the same. These will do. Okay. There's the hole. Threading it. Tightening it. There we go. Not impacting it. trick down inside of the coil. That was kind of too much. Here we'll just uh we'll just smear it on in the other one there. Spread it around. There we go. So drop you. There's the uh the rubber seal. Just trying to find a hole here. Right there. Okay. What's this problem? Seriously? There. There's a slight misalignment. that electrical connector lines up. Okay, that connector's connected. So this is the this is the hardest one. Just due to space constraints. That's tight. This one's already been pre-lubricated. There's the seal. Drop this guy down in there. And I'm gonna need to get that connector on before we tighten it down. Hmm. What's going on here? Got it. The rubber seal at the bottom of the boot, or at the bottom of the coil, it's not the right bolt. Did not want to go past that little uh, metallic plate. It's squished and expanded with getting caught on the plate. Two. Let's go over here to the other side and get the remainders. Pull this thing over. I love how I just took this off and now I gotta put it back on. That's the way we love our job so much. We do it twice. Except for uh, CP's garage. He doesn't want to do that engine job twice. It's a big negative. Cody, you want to do that job twice? Uh, 
What if the engine that they sell sell sold us is is uh, broken? Um, Ford's gonna pay for it. And we yeah, and we we find that it's got like collapsed lifters out of the box. That happened to a, a friend of ours. Put in a brand new three liter diesel, and it, it made it about twelve minutes. Broken right out of the box. Oh, the engine sat around? Yeah. Mm, yeah, that'll do it. This one's a 22. So, new old stock. That one's been sitting for two years? Yeah. Front roll. It's not a good sign. died everywhere signs what is it oh yeah so everything's broken on that truck that's cool must clutch keeps spinning every time I stop Okay, last coil on the back side here. You get it some schmoo, some glob of grease. There's our little seal that always likes to fall off apparently. Let's just slide this guy down. Get out of here, ratchet. And this is another one I'm gonna have to connect before this uh, coil is seated all the way. There's our snap. That's done in position. Fastener coming in. here thinking I plug you back in we'll start these bolts here there's one second one very nice and I found another one that I can substitute for the one that's missing way out back that one that had uh, had been omitted by the last individual that was in this location there we go right there good well that didn't tighten great stripped out plastic didn't tighten either that one did yeah those are stripped that's why solution coarse threaded self-tapping plastic uh, fastener that'll dig in and secure this mount right here not if I go the wrong way. Hmm. That was better than nothing. A little tighter. Ah, failure. Man, oh man. Didn't expect this to happen. Oh. 
I suppose I'll try it with a longer, longer bolt here. There. And sorry with the one in the back. That's a. Uh, try to find another bolt here. I'll use this coarse one first. See if that locks it down. It didn't do so well back there. Okay, that works. It's secure again. Cool. Now, let's get out of this dungeon of a back uh, cylinder bank and get these front sections uh, put back together. Okay, next set of sparking plugs. Let's get them all dropped in and threaded up and tightened down and all that good stuff. on our coil packs here. That one, where's my, my squirt bottles of lube? There we are. Get three of them going. Okay, connected. Connected, dropped in. Last one here, connected. Dropped in. Cool. Fasteners. Na, 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 right in front of me. Uno, dos, tres. Cuatro, cinco, cinco, seis. <laughs> Torx bit slippage, not cool. Don't do that, Ray. There we go. Let's get that last one set up. Okay, one more glop of gloop. Glop of gloop. It's a new word. Connect that guy, get you down in your home right there, and then one more, where'd that bolt go? Right in front of me. In there. All right, it's all eight plugs. Let's see, the only thing I'm lacking is, oh yeah. I need to put that guy back together through the hole right here. And the clamp needs to go back on. There we go. I knew I was forgetting something. And of course the cover and the connector. Gotta get that too. Pliers were locked in. There we go, plug this guy back in, doing it twice, good. 
All right, let's go uh, hop back into the cab and fire this thing up, and then we'll do that misfire check. All right, climbing on back into this unit. Restarting the engine. Beautiful. We have no misfires present. I don't feel it. Your software is out of date. Contact your sales rep for more information. No, I'm not gonna do that. I don't wanna buy more software. Is this thing locking me out? Restart, try it again. You better not lock me out. We'll have a gatekeeping conversation about that. Snap on. Waking up, come on with it. There we go. Okay, let's go back into data. We're gonna go through misfires one more time. Make sure that those, uh, those lingering misfires are no longer present. So here we go, cylinders, we're looking at one through seven right now. One through eight, that's the one on the bottom. Let's give it some throttle blurps here. There's one. So far, so good. Nothing going on here. Codes cleared. Restarting. Back into data. Misfire data again. Nothing current. And the history data has been cleared. Oh, let's find those O2s one more time. Go ahead and graph it for our viewing pleasure. Makes it easier. So up top, that's upstream bank one. This is the downstream that monitors the converter, that middle graph, and the bottom graph is upstream bank two. We can see they're both switching, high, low, high, low. We can confirm that by watching the actual voltages. Let's give it throttle. And we are still switching. Let's pull throttle back. Back down to idle. Both graphs dropped low. And we are resuming our switching pattern. Beautiful. Okay, this thing is good to go regarding our misfire and our check engine light. Light's still off. Uh, I'm not gonna go drive this car right now. I need to uh, do an engine oil change with some customer supplied engine oil. They got some cash for all and a witch filter back there. And they want me to put a serpentine belt on it and I'm gonna do that as well. But uh, that's kind of uh, uh, not really fitting of the Diag theme on this video, so I'm not gonna record any of that. Uh, having said all that, I'm gonna go ahead and use this opportunity to close this video out right now. Uh, I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video certainly hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below do not forget to tap the like button while you're down there ding a ling ling tire pressure and most importantly have yourselves a fantastic day see you guys later in a cadillac in a tune-up end of o2 sensor diagnostic in a video in a transmission powering down Pew.